Hey everyone, this is Josh with another Bitcoin and blockchain tutorial available at chaintuts.com. And today we're going to be talking about understanding Bitcoin transaction fees and processing times by understanding the mempool. So we're going to talk a little bit about how transactions are sent out, how they're processed, and how limitations of the Bitcoin network affect fees and processing times. So first, in order to understand a bit about uh, the mempool and transaction processing, we need to talk a little bit about what actually happens to a Bitcoin transaction when you send it out to you uh, from your wallet. So when you send value from uh, your wallet to somebody else on the Bitcoin network, what actually happens is your wallet creates and signs a transaction, which is really a data structure uh, full of information that the network needs in order to process it. And what it does is it actually broadcasts that transaction out to other nodes on the network. And this occurs in Bitcoin using a pretty simple flood model. So your uh, wallet sends it out to uh, its nearest nodes that it can find, and those nodes propagate it out to other nodes that they're connected to. And importantly, this does include mining nodes. And what these nodes do is they put all of the unprocessed transactions in a data structure called the mempool. Now, miners then will pull unprocessed transactions together into what is called a candidate block. And miners will work to solve the network's proof of work problem to finalize that block, uh, which is essentially what you can think of as a batch processing of transactions. So when you send out a raw transaction, that transaction is not yet considered confirmed or completely accepted by the network. But when miners include your transaction in a block and solve that proof of work problem, your, your transaction is considered uh, confirmed and fully processed. So when miners pull these transactions together into blocks and batch process them, they can't just do all of the transactions at once necessarily. Every cryptocurrency network sets some constraints on the number of transactions that can be processed. So there are two types of constraints on how transactions can be included in blocks. The first constraint is the block size. So this is the actual data size of all the transactions pulled together uh, that are the network rules allow to be confirmed in one block. In Bitcoin BTC, this is a size limitation of four weight units. And this is a special calculation that's been done since the activation of the SegWit rules. Uh, historically, this limit was uh, a hard one megabyte limit based on the actual size of the transactions in the block. Um, and it's still sometimes erroneously referred to as the one megabyte limit. Uh, but really, since the activation of SegWit, again, there's this special four-weight unit calculation. The other constraint uh, that occurs on batch processing of transactions is actually the block time. There's a uh, difficulty for this proof-of-work problem that miners solve, and that difficulty is adjusted so that blocks are found on average about every 10 minutes for Bitcoin. And this also holds true for other Bitcoin forks, such as Bitcoin Cash or Bitcoin SV. So there are two limitations then on how many transactions can actually be processed at one time. So there's only one megabytes or four weight units worth of transactions that can be processed uh, in Bitcoin at one time. And that's only within a 10 minute window. So for all the transactions that are broadcast within 10 minutes, uh, those may all potentially be included in a block, but it's that batch processing, processing is only going to occur every 10 minutes. So that leads to the potential of a backlog of transactions that need verified. If there's more transactions within 10 minutes that can be processed within the block size limit, then some transactions will have to wait. And this is where we get into understanding transaction fees. Again, because of this limitation, not all transactions can be batch processed at the same time. 
there are often conditions on the Bitcoin network where there are many more transactions that can be fit into one 10 minutes for weight unit block. And so therefore, there becomes a supply and demand problem. Miners get to choose which transactions from the mempool that they include in the block that they're processing. And so miners will always choose the transactions that offer up the highest transaction fee. Now, in that case, this creates this sort of fee market. So if there's a backlog in transactions, the users that pay the higher fee will get uh, their transactions confirmed faster. And so over time, as the network backlog might increase, you'll see transaction fees for uh, you know, getting included in the next block or the next three or six blocks increase, uh, and they've been historically even as high as $15 or $20 a transaction uh, to be included in the next block. So there are some ways to mitigate this problem of extremely high fees due to network congestion, and it just depends on what a particular cryptocurrency network wants to do. Uh, one example is that you can increase the uh, block time constraint, or really I should say decrease. For example, Litecoin uses a 2.5 minutes block time. So if there's a bunch of transactions being broadcast on the Litecoin network, the mempool can clear out faster because transactions can be processed every two and a half minutes rather than every 10 minutes. Uh, some networks such as Ethereum and Digibyte use lightning fast block times uh, that are only about 15 seconds apiece. Another uh, potential constraint that can be changed is, again, the block size. Uh, forks of Bitcoin, such as Bitcoin Cash, will process a much higher uh, amount of transaction data than one megabyte at a time. And that transaction limit has been increased over time. So the uh, design idea behind Bitcoin Cash, for example, is they keep the 10 uh, minutes block time, but so many more transactions can be fit into one block that the mempool is generally always clear out within that 10 minutes. And by changing these constraints so that the mempool doesn't become congested means that fees stay low and transaction times stay fast. However, uh, you know, there is a debate in the community about some of the trade-offs of this. With faster block times, there is the trade-off of what are called orphan blocks. Uh, remember that miners are all working together to independently solve this proof of work problem in sort of a race to see who gets there first. Uh, there are cases where two miners in different parts of the network solve the problem at about roughly the same time, but depending on how uh, those found blocks are propagated through the rest of the network, uh, one block will win that race and get picked, while the other perfectly valid block will not get included in the blockchain. So that's the concept of an orphaned block. And it turns out that when you have faster block times, you do get an increase in the number of blocks that can become orphaned. And this is just due simply due to network lag. The other trade-off with block size is somewhat of a hot topic of debate within the community. Um, many renowned Bitcoin experts argue that increased block sizes make it harder for users to run full nodes and therefore have a centralizing effect on the network, where only uh, things like mining companies with a lot more resources control more full nodes. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, I'm a fan of Bitcoin Cash and bigger block solutions, and so I don't necessarily agree with that take, but I want to encourage everyone to do their own research on that topic and come to your own conclusions. Again, different cryptocurrencies solve this problem and handle these um, block processing constraints differently. So it just depends on the use cases uh, that you, know, you care about and uh, the properties of those cryptocurrencies that you care about the most. Uh, you may like the Bitcoin model that's a little bit more conservative, uh, but can result in uh, slower processing for higher fees. Or you may be somebody that really values low fee and very fast process transactions. So maybe you prefer a solution like Bitcoin Cash or Digibyte or Litecoin. It's all up to you. The great thing about cryptocurrency is there's a vast market out there of differing solutions. So this has been a little bit about understanding the mempool and uh, block processing and how it affects transaction fees. 
As always, there is a written article on the Chain Tutorials website that accompanies this video tutorial if you like to learn that way. And as always, I want to thank you very much for listening.